Hey guys, The Common Man here. So I apologize, it's been quite a while since I've uploaded a video. Unfortunately, things have been kind of crazy at home with the, uh, you know, my young boys and uh, just trips and things. So it's been hard to get, uh, get some time to make a video. But I did just recently get a new knife and I decided, all right, I'm going to try to set aside some time to make a video on this guy. So here we go. So uh, for those of you that don't recognize this, this is the Tactile Knives Rockwall. Um, this is a knife that, to be honest with you, when I first saw the original version, I wasn't all that interested because I'm not a big fan of a solid titanium handle that is just plain metal. Um, for example, like my uh, 0562 here. Uh, I love this knife, I really do, but I'm not the biggest fan of this just titanium uh, handle. I, I like a little bit of color, so uh, like I said, this is just as an example, just for the color. Um, so when I saw <clears throat> when I saw that they released a few different versions of this knife with uh, like Cerakoted handles uh, scales, I was very very interested. So this is a part of their seasonal line. I'm not 100% sure what makes this seasonal, and they they call this the uh, the safety first version. So seasonal, I'm not 100% sure, but um. Anyway, this is uh, just, just a quick overview. This is going to have a MagnaCut blade. It's got the uh, black, um, you know, I wish I remember the type of coating that's on this. Maybe DLC coated, I believe. And then this is actually titanium scales with a little bit of texturing here. And we'll go over some more details uh, once we get down on the different parts and pieces of the knife. But anyway, a little bit of texturing there. And uh, so titanium, and this is actually a Cerakote, which is really, really cool. Um, this is a relatively expensive knife. However, I did get it on the secondhand market. So there may be a few things on this knife that aren't 100% perfect. And uh, it also is on skiff bearings. The previous owner replaced the bearings for skiff bearings. So we may go over a couple of little things I wasn't super impressed with, but it might be related to the disassembly and reassembly. Um, not talking bad on the previous owner. Sometimes when you put things back together, it may not be 100% perfect. But uh, anyway, we'll just dive right in. First, we'll uh, go ahead and talk about the blade here. So like I said, this is in Magna Cut. It's going to have what I believe to be a DLC coating. Um, and if you see some weird colorations, it's because I did just oil this blade up. It might need a, a thorough cleaning, but I just slapped some oil on there. Uh, I actually was carrying this all weekend over the 4th of July, and uh, so it, it got a little dirty. It definitely, definitely saw some use. But you can see it's got really a nice, uh, I guess, you know, you'd call it a drop point blade. It's going to have a, what seems to be, yeah, that's going to be a flat grind that goes up most of the way up the blade. A little bit of a drop here, a little bit of a swedge up at the front there. You can see very nice puncturing tip, very consistent edge on this guy, which I'm very happy about. Pretty acute angle, and it's quite thin behind the edge. It really is very thin. It's also an extremely thin blade stock, which is really cool. We can go ahead and get a couple of knives to compare that blade stock thickness up against. Um, let's just go ahead and do... A couple of knives everyone may be familiar with. So this guy, for just kind of an average thick thickness on the blade, you can see up against the pair of three, considerably thinner than that. And then uh, we're going to get another knife with a very, very thin blade, and that is the Cubit. So you can see, not quite as thin as the Cubit, but anyway, um, you, you can go on their website to check the uh, specifications and the, the exact numbers. But uh, just to give you a rough idea of how thin that blade is, it is quite thin. Um, very nice thumb stud, well out of the cutting path. Great sharpening choil, nice and deep. I really like that. Um, one thing I don't particularly care for about this blade is I do wish that it came down a little bit lower. It does, it, it's a little bit high in reference to the bottom edge of the scales. So I do like a blade to come either parallel right right in line with the bottom edge of that scale or maybe even slightly lower that just seems to give you a little bit better uh, cutting action if you wanted to cut down flat on something it helps a little bit um, and, and honestly it's just a weird preference of mine and I don't really have the best explanation for it it's just what I like nice jimping on the back good for the thumb very nice grip um, 
Overall, a great blade, great slicer, great for puncturing. We're going to move back to the scales of the handle here. You can see, like I said, it's going to be titanium with a uh, an orange Cerakote. I don't believe you can orange anodize, so I believe, you know, it had to be a Cerakote, and I'm, I'm really, really digging the Cerakote here. I think it's, it's a really nice look. Um, we'll go ahead and talk about that texturing as well. I'm going to do the best I can to capture that on the camera. It might be kind of difficult to get it to focus. Yeah, I think you can see it there, how it's got this kind of like a ribbed texture. It's very fine, very subtle, but it does actually provide some grip, and man, it looks really good. I really like the look. Yeah, you can see it right there. Very nice. Looks good, feels good. I really like it. Uh, great minimal hardware. You can see it is a T8. It's going to be T8 all around. I really like that. No T6s here, which is great. And you can see the pocket clip is very interesting, how it seats down underneath the scale. And you know, what I just noticed that I didn't realize before is the the uh, hardware is just on one side. So the other side is actually completely without hardware except for this, uh, this little guy here. Uh, this is going to be the female end of the pivot screw. And it's got that awesome little caution symbol on there. I really like that. That's a very cool, very cool little touch. So it looks good. Pocket clip is great. I love this style of pocket clip. Very deep, very simple. Comes up, doesn't flatten out to catch things. It's also lightened up a bit. It's got a little hole cut in there and uh, just super minimal. You really don't see much in the pocket and I really like that. Um, one issue that I was going to mention um, and when I was talking about, you know, possibility of disassembly, reassembly, um, but you can see I don't even know if I can capture it all that well. There's a little bit of a gap between this backspacer and the scale here, and it's really hard to capture on camera. But I think you can kind of see it right there, that little bit of a gap. I don't know, I don't love that. When you pay as much money as you would for this knife, again, I didn't pay full price, but uh, like I said, it was from the, uh, you know, it was secondhand. But when you pay you know, close to 400, honestly, for this guy, I think it's 399. You don't really want to see these gaps and things in there. And that's really the only fit and finish issue that I see with the knife. But yeah, for that money, I'm, I was surprised to see that gap there. Um, other than that, though, it's it's really, the fit and finish is very good. Um, but we'll talk about the action. Another thing that I don't love about the action is how, uh, you can hear it's very scratchy. Not gritty necessarily, but very scratchy. And the thing is, I think I know the reason for that. And that is the detent ball on the uh, the lock bar here, riding against that coating. And I do fully expect that to smooth out. I think over time, I did put some oil on it. Over time, that should smooth out. And I'm very excited to see how, how well that goes. Um, it's not drop shutty so much, but it is pretty smooth. You can tell these skiff bearings are very nice. And I wish I could have tested it out with the original bearings, but... Uh, I just don't have that ability. I don't. I don't have the original bearings, but um, yeah. I mean, it, it's good. You know, you can shake it closed. But the big thing is, it's tuned beautifully. You can do just the regular thumb stud flick. You can do the reverse flick, and no matter how you do it, it's going to fly open every time. It's very, very reliable, and the lock bar is also very easy to get at. They do have. Yeah, a little bit of a cutout here, although not much, if any, honestly. But the thing is, they do have nice texturing on that lock bar where you can get to it with your thumb, no problem. Very easy to disengage. Really nice. And uh, I, I think they did this extremely well. They kind of just seated it down in there, and it looks great. You don't have that whole lock bar exposed, just the bit that you need. Lockup is very good. Very, very good lockup. Yeah, overall, the function functionality of the knife is great. And uh, like I said, the only issue is just that little bit of, of uh, noise, that little bit of scratchiness on that detent against the coating on the blade. But again, I do expect that to, uh, to wear in just fine. Um, let's go ahead and do a size comparison. I think that's about all we got left. So we've got uh, the Para 3. Para 3 that we'll compare it up against, you can see it's actually very similar in length to the Para 3, but it is very, very, um, what do you want to call it, slim, very slender, which I was a little bit surprised about. So here's the Para 2, 
just for another comparison, you can see it's quite a bit smaller than the Para 2. It's not a very big knife, not at all. And let's go ahead and get a knife that I think it's extremely similar to. Get this guy out of the way. And that is the Wee Knives Cherith. I really think this is an extremely similar knife. If you like the Cherith or if you've held the Cherith and, and you enjoyed it, I think you'd really enjoy this knife. They're very similar, a little bit taller blade on the Cherith. Um, overall, just a similar design and they're both very nice. And honestly, I, I love this combo here because if I want to be a little bit classier, I'll wear the uh, or carry the Cherith. If I want something a little more maybe casual, I'd carry this guy. Um, Although this could be a decent dress-up knife, I just think the color combo, for me, this is more of a, a casual carry. But uh, yeah, like I was saying, you know, the size of the knife kind of surprised me. What really motiva motivated me to buy this knife is I wanted something similar to my Spyderco smock, but the smock is just a little bit big and uh, not much, not much, you know, not too big. I wanted something just a hair smaller, but lighter and a little bit less... Uh, in your face. This is a very bold design, um, at least in my mind. It's something very unique, and I wanted something a little bit more subdued, but along the same lines. So I was, you know, I was looking at this guy, and I was hoping it was a little bit closer in size, but this is considerably smaller, and I was surprised when I pulled it out of the box at how small it is. Um, but just to give you an idea, you know, if this is the size knife that you're looking at, this guy might be a little bit on the small side. <clears throat> but, uh, it's not too bad. It gets the job done and you still feel like you've got a relatively substantial knife in your pocket. But overall, guys, I mean, this is a great knife. I would highly recommend it. It operates beautifully. Um, I'm, I'm hoping it does break in and I'm, I'm sure it will break in just fine. And then really the only issue is just that little bit of fit and finish, which is super nitpicky. But again, this is not a cheap knife. $399, at least I'm 99% I'm, I'm sure it's still $399. Um, and, you know, hopefully, hopefully it doesn't go up on us, but that's a lot of money for a knife. And, uh, you want it to be pretty much perfect for that price. Now, like I said, I got this for a lot less. So for what I paid, super, super happy. So if you can justify that $3.99 price in your mind, I'm going to say go for it. Uh, it's a great knife. It'll be a great addiction, addition to your collection. And, uh, yeah. So those are my thoughts on the Tactile Knives Rockwall. Go check it out, guys. So uh, thanks for watching. If you like my video, please leave a like. And if you want to see more of my stuff, uh, consider subscribing. I'm going to try to pick up the pace a little bit. But, uh, you know, I, I'm only buying knives out of my pocket. And I don't get money any other way for this hobby. So it may be a little bit slower these days on new knife videos. But anyway, thanks for watching. Take care, guys.